Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous, several unrelated groups of birds managed to step into some of their vacated niches. Despite the general ascent of mammals during the Cenozoic, Neonathenes developed both flightlessness and large size several times. With the exception of the carnivorous Cariamiforms, the lineage that contains the modern South American Seriamas, as well as the extinct forest rachids and their lesser known northern hemisphere equivalents, the Bathornithids, the vast majority of Cenozoic giant flightless birds were, and still are, herbivores or omnivores. All modern examples, from ostriches to emus to rheas, are members of Paleonathae, which developed superficially similar appearances independently after their small flying ancestors split off from each other in the aftermath of the KPG extinction event. However, up until the end of the Pleistocene, there were other completely unrelated giant flightless taxa, including the main subject of this video, the Dromornithids. Once endemic to Australia, these impressive animals have been given the name Mihirongs, from an indigenous term meaning giant bird, as well as the informal title of demon ducks, which gives you a good clue towards their evolutionary relationships. Unlike the Paleonath, Emus and Cassowaries that lived alongside them, Dromornithids were members of the major Neonathene clade Galloanceres, which contains the chicken-like as well as the duck-like birds, although putting it this way massively undersells their diversity. Dromornithid fossils have been known to Western scientists since the 19th century, although the Aboriginal peoples of Australia once lived alongside these animals during the late Pleistocene. Although they would have very superficially resembled large emus in life, with strongly developed hind limbs and greatly reduced stubby forelimbs, most forms were also quite heavy bodied. This was once thought to indicate that these birds were slow moving plodders, although more recent studies seem to suggest that Dromornithids may have been faster than once assumed relying on raw power to make up for their heavy builds. Like many of the unrelated Paleonaths, these demon ducks lacked a keel on the breastbone or sternum, which was lost as these animals adapted for lives spent entirely on the ground. While the shape of their beaks vary depending on the species, these were often quite large and robustly built, lacking hooked tips like those present in carnivorous birds, indicating herbivorous diets. Other features of their skeletons, including their cranial anatomy, as well as proteins extracted from the youngest species, have shown similarities to both galliforms, the chicken-like birds, and the duck-like anseriforms, with their exact relationships being quite unstable. The most recent study on Dromornithid phylogeny has found them to be close relatives of the South American screamers, a group of fairly unusual anseriforms with chicken-like beaks. At the moment, only four genera have been described, with the oldest of these being Barrowertornis from the late Oligocene and early Miocene of the famous Riversley fossil sites of Queensland. However, large footprints from the early Eocene Red Bank Plains formation may have also been made by Dromornithids. Even if this wasn't the case, these animals must have originated during the Eocene at least, given their close relationships to modern screamers, which are relatively basal and seriforms. Barrower tornus is currently the smallest and most basal Dromornithid known, being about the same size as a cassowary, and potentially weighing between 27 and 79 kilograms, or up to 174 pounds. Its limb bones were more robust than those of emus, but were more gracile than those of later Pleistocene Dromornithids, with its hind limbs being proportionally similar to the southern cassowary, which suggests that this genus was still a relatively fast runner. Barrowertornis would have lived in warm forested ecosystems, with the little that is known of its skull indicating that its beak was quite narrow and pointed, similar to that of the later Geniornis. Another genus, Ilbandornis from the late Miocene, appears to have been more cursorial and was the most lightly built member of the family. Native to the Alcuta fossil beds of the Northern Territory roughly 8 million years ago, two species of this animal dwelt in the semi-arid open woodlands of the region living alongside the wolf-sized Thylacinus potens, the bizarre herbivorous Palocestes, and the carnivorous Thylacoleonid Wacoleo. In addition to body fossils, the remains of Ilbandornis eggshells have also been found. Molecular analyses of these fragments have confirmed that this genus was herbivorous. This pair of species also lived alongside the larger Dromornithid type genus, Dromornis itself. Originating during the late Oligocene at Riversley, Dromornis is represented by four species, which increased in size and mass as time went on. 
All are united by their possession of heavy builds and massive, robustly constructed tall and deep skulls. Originally thought to have been carnivorous, with their bills adapted for crushing bone, it has since been found that these animals were almost certainly herbivores, although it's not exactly clear what kind of vegetation Dromornis consumed. The structure of the brain of this genus shows that all species possessed acute stereoscopic vision, and probably preferred forested ecosystems close to rivers, lakes and billabongs. The four species were all pretty massive, with the earliest and smallest being D. Murrayi from Riversley, which would have stood about 5 feet tall and weighed up to 200 kilograms, while the youngest species, D. Sturtoni, was one of the largest flightless birds to ever live. Adult males, which were significantly larger than the females, stood up to 3 meters or 10 feet tall and could weigh as much as 500 kilograms or roughly 1,100 pounds. This disparity in size has been interpreted by researchers as evidence of the biology of the species, involving behaviors such as the incubation of eggs by the female, pair bonding, parental care and aggression while nesting, along with courtship or display habits similar to those exhibited by living anseriforms. Analysis of its bones has also found that this species was relatively long-lived and slow-growing, taking 10 years to reach skeletal maturity, indicating that it was also a K-selected animal, producing a small number of young that would have required constant protection. Dromornis sturtoni was endemic to the Alcuta fossil beds during the late Miocene and early Pliocene, where it lived alongside the smaller Dromornithid Ilbandornis. The species died out around 5 million years ago, for reasons that are not exactly clear, with it being suggested that a combination of the continuing aridification of Australia at this time, and a slow reproductive system, may have ultimately doomed this massive bird to extinction. This left only a single genus, Geniornis, to persist into the Pleistocene. This was a medium-sized Dromornithid, standing up to 7 feet tall and weighing between 250 and 350 kilograms, or up to 770 pounds. Prior to 2024, it was assumed that this animal possessed a deep, tall skull similar to that of Dromornis, being well adapted for feeding on tough vegetation. However, in a paper published by Phoebe McKinnery et al. that analysed a recently discovered near-complete Geniornis skull, it was revealed that this bird actually had a relatively narrow slender beak similar to that of living geese. This bill shape was notably different from that of other Dromornithids, and may have been a specialisation for feeding on aquatic vegetation. Other potential adaptations to an aquatic feeding style may have allowed for protection of the ears and throat when submerging their heads in water. Only one species, G. newtoni, has so far been identified, with this animal inhabiting what is now South Australia and New South Wales during the Pleistocene. The remains of blackened eggshells that belong to Geniornis have also been found, and suggest that ancient Aboriginal peoples cooked and ate the eggs of this large bird. Given this animal's seeming reliance on wetlands and bodies of fresh water, as well as its probably slow rate of reproduction, Geniornis would have been uniquely vulnerable to the continued aridification of Australia during the late Pleistocene, potentially leading to its extinction circa 50,000 years ago, alongside the vast majority of the continent's other megafaunal species. Sadly, this would be the end of the so-called demon ducks, leaving only the unrelated Paleonath emus and cassowaries to persist into the Holocene as Australia's sole large flightless birds. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the false saber-toothed cat Barbara Felis, which has recently been reclassified as a late surviving Nimravid. See you again soon. Cheerio.